quintessential scary Japanese horror movies that will leave you shaken. Horror movie enthusiasts all over the world reserve a special respect for Japanese horror movies. Be it the campy and cheesy horror flicks or the spooky ones that could give you literal nightmares, the Japanese horror genre is bustling with some classics that will leave you shaken. The imaginative thinking of the filmmakers has ensured some creative projects, the likes of which are rarely found in the western horror genre. There have been some instances of westernization of Japanese horror flicks where movies like The Grudge, The Ring, and Shudder have been remade, but none of these attempts are worthy of competing with their Japanese counterparts. In this video, we will elaborate on some of the gems of Japanese horror that can ensure a few sleepless nights. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> Onibaba, 1964. The story is premised during the 14th century civil war in Japan, where a middle-aged woman and her daughter-in-law kill soldiers and sell their possessions for a living. Her son and husband were killed while stealing supplies, and when a neighbor comes back from the war, he starts having an affair with a young widow. After he doesn't listen to the woman's repeated pleas to leave her daughter-in-law alone, she uses a demon mask to haunt her daughter-in-law. While she only planned to scare the young woman from not meeting the neighbor, she has a nasty surprise in store for her when she decides to remove the mask. If we consider the usual Japanese period pieces, they are sometimes a tad slow-paced, but Onibaba has no such issues. The word Onibaba literally means demon woman, and although there's no such actual demons in the story, the actions of the characters are what make this a horror flick. The thrill of the plot is cleverly entwined with the prevailing sexual tension that runs through much of the movie. The film wouldn't have been so iconic without the spectacular cinematography that makes each scene stand out. The actress who plays the daughter-in-law, Jotsuki Yoshimura, is dropped dead gorgeous besides being a fabulous performer. The gravity of the grim story full of lust, envy, and betrayal will not let you leave your seats until the movie ends. The dark pit where the woman dumped the warriors they kill is absolutely haunting. It is believed that the demon mask used in this movie later inspired the makeup in the movie The Exorcist. This is a must watch for those craving for a different brand of horror. Audition 1999 a widower, Aoyama, who is grieving his wife's death, decides to give love another chance at the insistence of his son. He consults with his friend, Yoshikawa, who is a film producer, and they decide to audition woman for a fake role to find the perfect bride. Aoyama is smitten by the portfolio of a beautiful lady named Asami, falls head over heels for her after a date. But there is a shock in store for him, as Asami might not be as simple as she appears to be. Takashi Mike treats the audience with an unorthodox story in this movie. As long as the mixture of gore and realism is not disturbing you, you have a thought-provoking plot in your hands. There is a strong element of psychological drama inculcated in the plot that explores the confined roles that women are forced to inhabit in conventional Japanese society. When you see the psycho killer version of Asami or the torture scene, you're going to shudder in disbelief. There is a particular scene that leaves many viewers cringing hard, and some can barely watch the gruesomeness of the last 30 minutes of the film. Then again, there are some complex bits about Asami's past life that were full of abuse, and that made her into what she is. If you have to analyze this film, you must be able to comprehend the dream sequences and the various themes of the storyline. The movie probably never had the fame it deserved because it had too much violence for the serious audience and was intellectually challenging for the common core fans. Ah! Kaosu, 1977. A young schoolgirl, Oshare, travels to her aunt's country home, along with six of her friends. What was supposed to be a fun trip transforms into their worst nightmare. They weren't aware that Oshare's aunt is dead and the place is now haunted. As the girls start disappearing one by one, it is time to discover the horrific secret behind the haunting. The plot isn't something that you horror lovers haven't seen yet. The idea is actually to create a horror flick that banks on satire merged with scary elements. 
It is an experience that will put you through a wide range of emotions instead of striking one single note the whole time. The director, Nobuhiko Obayashi, has purposely indulged in some poor special effects to add to the campy nature of the movie. There are some interesting characters who have been assigned names according to their characteristics, such as gorgeous, melody, sweet, etc. The movie has been ascribed a cult status for being a unique concept with a stylized look. Some of the scenes are blood curdling, as indeed you see a piano devouring someone or the clock spilling out blood. The evil cat also adds to the list of outrageous scenes that make up nightmares. <laughs> Tetsuo the Iron Man, 1989 A businessman is out for a drive with his girlfriend when he hits someone who has an extreme metal fetish. After the accident, the businessman discovers that his body is undergoing some strange changes where it is turning into scrap metal. It turns out that the man he hit continues to live through him and is guiding his rage to bring about a final mutation. Is there any way to stop this horrific transformation? The movie might have a low budget, but it is regarded as a cult classic that shook the foundation of conventional horror films. The cyberpunk horror flick by Shinya Tsukamoto has minimal use of dialogues, and this makes the movie all the more mysterious. It isn't something for the faint-hearted, as there are some gruesome moments such as when a metal fetishist cuts open his leg and inserts a steel rod inside him. Besides these gory scenes, the film is surreal and has come campy moments that add to the entertainment. The movie is black and white simply to add to the effect. The stop motion and clever use of metal twine and scrap are stunning. Tsukamoto literally takes in your worst nightmare and makes it into a movie. Some portions of the movie have later been used on several occasions, including in a music video for Machine Gun by Portishead. Watch this movie late into the night alone and watch your brain rust in peace. Battle Royale 2000 42 young students are released in a deserted island with a collar fitted with a bomb around their neck. It would explode if they didn't obey a command. The command is that they would compete in a battle royale that is a no-holds-barred game where opponents fight till just one of them is left. While some students are intent on playing the game, some others are just looking for a way to escape the island without causing damage. How many can survive this game of madness? This is a dystopian horror action flick that is based on the novel by Koshin Takami. Many are of the opinion that Hunger Games is strongly inspired by this movie. The elements of suspense keep you on the edge as you anticipate the upcoming scenes. Some of the death scenes are rather extreme, while some have an element of dark humor in them. What hits you hard is the fact that the protagonists are children who are being forced to brutalize and murder each other. The mesmerizing performance by the talented Japanese actor Takeshi Kitano demands applause, and the plot involving the perfect mix of bloodshed and humor promises a thrilling journey. Quentin Tarantino has gone on record to name this as one of his favorite movies, and ranked among the top 10 highest grossing films in Japan. In short, this is a really good movie that deserves repeated viewing just for how haunting the concept is. Carved, The Slit Mouth Woman, 2007 What happens when a terrifying urban legend turns out to be real? In this movie, a small town in Japan falls prey to a deadly spirit. She has a horribly disfigured face, and she kidnaps children for some unknown reasons. If someone comes face to face with her, she asks them a question before slaughtering them. Two teachers try to find out a way to stop this evil spirit from causing harm, but the final showdown will demand some unspeakable sacrifices from them. The best thing about this movie is that it manages to mix the excitement of a slasher movie with a dark atmosphere and some serious storytelling. The tension-filled unexpected moments galore in this movie, and you will be left wide-eyed with some of the plot twists that take place. As for the script of this movie, it pays particular attention to the character developments as you get to see the conflict of the young female teacher who goes through a divorce. While the special effects are a bit lacking, the makeup compensates for the flaws. 
Some scenes, like a person being cut open from ear to ear, are brought alive with a brilliant makeup. The visually grotesque antagonist is also a job well done for the makeup team. This is an absolute treat for those who admire the Asian horror flicks, as it promises to be a spooky ride with a dash of entertainment. <laughs> Noroi, The Curse, 2005. A paranormal journalist explores the strange incidents connected by the legend of an ancient demon named Kagutaba. He films a documentary where he captures the interactions with people associated with the demonic rituals. After the completion, he goes missing under mysterious circumstances. The investigation throws light on some deep dark secrets that were probably best left unexplored. The entire movie is shot in the style of a documentary, much like the popular horror movie The Blair Witch Project. However, it would be unfair to draw parallels between the two as they have no similarity whatsoever. The plot becomes interesting with the elaboration on the legend and ritualistic background of the demon Kagutaba. Usually Japanese horror movies are not known for brilliance and special effects, but Naroi stands out as an exception. This movie is scary to the core, but for that you have to sit through it patiently and soak in the narrative. Rather than cheap jump scare tricks, it relies more on the haunting ambience that it creates. The gritty cinematography is purposely done, courtesy of the documentary-styled, recorded footage that makes up the movie. Regarded by many as the scariest movie ever, maybe this is one film to watch with company and the lights on. Next, Hair Extensions, 2007. A young girl is found dead at the dock, and Yamazaki, the local coroner, discovers that her hair is strangely growing rapidly even after her death. Her eyes and organs have been surgically removed by some organ mafia, and her infuriated spirit causes the hair to grow continuously so she can live as a curse. Yamazaki decides to sell the girl's hair to the local hair salads who then use it as hair extensions. However, the real horrors are discovered when it comes to notice that the hair extensions have a life of their own. Those who are using these hair extensions will face some disastrous consequences. The movie might be passed off as a funny parody, but there are also some scary moments. The story largely deals with cursed hair that causes harm to all who wear it, and while the plot might seem simple enough, the good production value adds to the viewing experience. Shion Sono, the director, has the perfect idea of his audience's expectations and incorporates many gags that will appeal to the Japanese horror fans. The cast does fabulous work, and Miss Kuriyama and Ren Osugi, in particular, steal the show. The scenes in Osugi's room are incredible and have excellent use of lighting and hair effects. Equally haunting are the scenes where the possessed hair goes about killing people. There are some surreal and crazy moments, but the movie manages to maintain a dark and brooding ambience throughout. Uzumaki 2000 Uzumaki has a bizarre storyline based in a small Japanese town. Kiri notices that her boyfriend's father is obsessed with snails, and ultimately his obsession leads to his suicide. Soon she realizes that other inhabitants of the town are also starting to become possessed with different forms of spirals, where people are mutating into snails or developing Medusa-like hair. Is there a way of the citizens to exit from this deadly obsession? Although the story is based upon a popular manga, the movie came out before its completion. As a result, the climax is different from that depicted in the manga. The highlight of the movie is how it manages to transform from normal life to an abnormal phenomenon in a jiffy. The plot does imply a form of demonic possession without making it obvious, and this adds to the mysterious element in the film. Some of the scenes are outright creepy and bound to give you the chills. For instance, when a boy jumps to his death from a spiral staircase with an eerie smile on his face, or when a man kills himself by spinning himself in a washing machine, you would be awestruck at the absurdity. Uzumaki will delight you with a use of some brilliant effects, and when you add the amazing acting performances by the cast, have a masterpiece at hand. Are you tired of the usual cacophony of hollow western horror? In that case, this movie is going to be a terrific watch. <laughs> Marabito 2004 A 
freelance cameraman seems to be obsessed with the sensation of fear, and the journey takes him to explore an urban legend that involves mysterious spirits. He spots a man stabbing himself in the eye, and the reason behind such a horrific suicide seems intriguing to him. When he finds a strange woman who doesn't speak, he brings her back to his place only to realize that she only drinks blood. What follows is a terrifying transformation where the cameraman turns into a serial killer who drains the blood of his victims to feed the lady. The director is none other than Takashi Shimizu, the man behind the iconic horror franchise Juon, The Grudge. He filmed Marabito in a mere eight days, but the movie doesn't appear hurried or lacking in any way. The protagonist is an interesting character who's emotionally empty and alienated from society. The storyline captures his transformation perfectly and leads to a satisfying and upbeat conclusion. Shinya Tsukamoto, who played this challenging role, deserves all the appreciation for his outstanding effort. There are some flaws that you have to contend with, and one of them would be the amateurish special effects that have been used. We must also warn you that the concept and visuals might be disturbing for some. However, it is still a masterpiece in the psycho horror that you simply cannot afford to miss out on. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.